is uh, on with us. Uh, Mr. Secretary, it's great to, to, great to talk to you, and I'm sorry we're running behind this morning. There's been a lot of breaking news here in Greenville this morning. How you doing? I'm doing fine, and thanks again for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, I wanted to get you on to talk about this uh, ruling by the Court of Appeals that we heard about last week. A little bit complicated, but the bottom line, it seems to me that the uh, Obama administration through the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, was getting ready to uh, try to impose some very, very difficult regulations that would harm our eastern North Carolina farmers. Is that is that a pretty good characterization of what was going on? Um, I think it is. Uh, it, it was. It was a more. It was a most stunning overreach in our in in my recent uh, experience uh, in the fact that uh, it wasn't going to do anything about the environment. And we see this, by the way, in the Clean Power Plan question too. But what it was going to do was going to subject a lot, almost all of the lands east of I ninety five in North Carolina to federal jurisdiction, which means land use was going to have to be approved uh, every step practically by the federal government and uh, it was something that was clearly against North Carolina's interests it was against the Constitution the United States Constitution and uh, uh, since since my department is is uh, is, is sworn to uphold those we we did file suit uh, on behalf of our department uh, we have a very complicated system here in North Carolina where the Attorney General typically uh, would represent us but we took that on ourselves. Uh, Twenty-nine other states agreed. <laughs> I, was, I was I was getting ready to ask you. I mean, I, you know, this will sound very political, but reality-wise, I mean, uh, the Attorney General Roy Cooper has not been willing to file any to, to fight for North Carolina on some of these overreaches by, by the federal government. Was there a, a request into the Attorney General again to be a part of this that he denied? Yeah, well, well, we haven't heard back. I did, uh, you know, we went ahead and filed, and then uh, I reached out to say, look, you know, if you could, you, could you join as an amicus brief? Because it certainly would help for the attorney general's office to weigh in. And uh, we had never heard back from him. And not, and, and by this time now, the uh, the judge in the Sixth Circuit was, uh, I think, convinced enough with the arguments that they uh, that that uh, they voted for a stay, which is huge. It's typical, you know, that shows that they they believe our likelihood of success is there. And, uh, and they put this aside while we can move forward. And this, this is a huge decision, just the stay itself is a huge decision because we were having a hard time getting, getting some work done uh, going forward out of the Army Corps of Engineers who, uh, who helped implement this. So it, it was a huge thing. And, um, uh, yeah, it was unfortunate that we couldn't have the Attorney General join us. So, uh, in essence, uh, what the EPA was trying to do was redefine um, the waters of the United States, what they call WOTUS, waters of the United States, it, they were actually going to redefine waters of the United States and who had right. jurisdiction over them. Is that right? Right, right. The idea is under the Constitution and, and the Clean Water Act, they are meant to uh, regulate uh, navigable waters, and that can, of course, include any tributaries that, that go into navigable waters. What this sought to do was, was go far beyond that, uh, you know, Various uh, uh, calculations to show that you could go after just about any uh, ditch or puddle anywhere in <laughs> eastern North Carolina because of the water table as it is. Uh, these 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 bodies of water, if you can call it that, or these these clumps of dirt that got muddy sometimes when it rained, but they have nothing to do with protecting water quality in the tributaries and the navigable waters. Uh, and and so they, it was far outside uh, their authority under the Clean Water Act, or for, for that matter, the Constitution. So it was a, it was extremely important that North Carolina retain uh, control over those those areas and and for land use purposes and, and for land value purposes that it, that certainty uh, was maintained. You know, last time we had you on, um, you, you mentioned that in a lot of these cases where the federal government is trying these overreach programs that the North Carolina regulations uh, exceed federal regulations exceed, exceed federal requirements. Anyway, it, it, wasn't that the same situation here with this water quality issue? Yeah, it, it is. We there there are some areas that we that we want to uh, that we want to control for for our own purposes, for groundwater purposes, et cetera. But 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 the, the people have to remember that the Clean Water Act only gave the uh, the EPA authority for uh, controlling navigable waters, and and these were not uh, the, the, these bodies. Like I said, these clumps of dirt that we're talking about, and, and in some cases. In the in the eastern part of North Carolina, it's entire swath of 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 of, uh, of land. Those do not contribute to 
navigable waters. And so they, they, but that doesn't mean that there aren't cases where we're going to seek protection, and we do have those uh, those those programs in place. Well, it seems like you, it, you, basically what you're saying is is that you know, the, the federal government has these rules that regulate water and these navigable waters, but now they want to come in and any let's say a farmer has a pond or a uh, a detention pond or something like that on his land, the federal government now wants to take control of that, which seems to no, me to be a, a property rights issue on top of the fact that yeah, why no, is the it, federal it, government yeah. taking control of that when you, we've got state regulations for that? No, you know, absolutely. But what, it was far beyond that. They, they were going after, uh, after, uh, after the rain like we just had uh, recently, or even in an afternoon evening uh, thunderstorm. If you had a depressed party, a slightly depressed part of your farm that was now, uh, that, that now had standing water, that would have been included as a waters of the uh, of the U.S. So it was far beyond that. And again, it, it's the program was meant to to protect navigable waters. What they were doing was was taking uh, going far beyond that uh, in, into areas that that in some cases we regulate for other purposes, but in other cases shouldn't be regulated at all. So, uh, so the Court of Appeals Sixth Circuit ruled in favor of your petition on this what happens now because you know we've seen the obama administration on things like this in the past when they can't get things through the court system they find other ways to get or through the or through the congress they find other ways to get them done what's going to happen right. next on this well um you know the the interesting bit here is is that is that the courts are typically where the epa manages or the obama administration manages to to get things done that congress wouldn't do uh, in this case, you actually have a stay, which is actually a prohibition uh, to to implementing uh, this rule, which is very it's 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 pretty significant. And uh, you know, usually the courts will say, "Look, let's let's hash this out, and it'll be three years later before you finally have a judicial decision." And by that time, you know, the EPA is already implementing uh, these requirements, uh, which is what's going on in the Clean Power Plan. But uh, so. So this is really pretty stunning. I think uh, this knocked the uh, the EPA back on their heels a bit, and, um, uh, and and so we're really very happy with our legal team, and uh, and the fact that uh, the the court went our way. Well, again, uh, you know, uh, people will say this is political, but I and, and I don't care if they do. You know, thank goodness we have people like you and Governor McCrory who are fighting for the little guy in North Carolina, fighting for the farmers and things like that. Again, you know, Roy, Roy Cooper wants to run for governor, and he announces he's going to run for governor and be for Eastern North Carolina, the little guy. Here's a case here where, again, I just want to confirm, you asked him to weigh in on this on behalf of the farmers of Eastern North Carolina and North Carolina, and crickets, you got no response. He was not willing to sue the federal government. Yeah, and let me just say one thing, which is that, that North Carolina farmers are some of the most sophisticated uh, businessmen that, that I know. I mean, they knew the importance of this, of this regulation. And a lot of times I think what you've seen is politicians think that, that, you know, these rules are so convoluted that people can't figure out who's right and who's wrong. In this case, I mean, the, the, the farm, you wouldn't believe how many farmers I talked to in, North, in eastern North Carolina, and they immediately asked about this issue. So yeah. they're very sophisticated, and, um, and I think, you know, the great thing is, is Governor McCrory's got their back, and uh, it's, uh, it's working out for us so far. So we're really, really very happy with the decision. Well, thank you for uh, filing this lawsuit against uh, the federal government and for sticking with it on behalf of, uh, of our farmers. We appreciate that very much. It's great talking to you, and we thank you for the time. Sorry we were late this morning. Hope you're doing well. Not at all. Not at all. We're doing great, and I always uh, love to hear from you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Sec you. Secretary Don Vandervart from the uh, Secretary uh, from the Department of uh, Div Environment and the natural resources, uh, Diener, as we call it, in Raleigh. It was great to hear from uh, Mr. Secretary this morning.